is based on the Theon's figurine of Snake Goddess from Knossos, Crete. The Snake Goddess, one of the most iconic images of the Manon civilization, commands attention through her stance and elaborate dress. Theon's figurines of her likeness have been found in the ancient late Bronze Age palace in Crete. She wears a tiered flounced skirt. The six tiers, alternating in blocks of color in tones of natural tan, purplish blue, and dark ochre. This style of skirt is also represented in sculpture, wall paintings, and seals from ancient Babylonian and Syrian dress, indicating a Near Eastern influence. It is debated whether the skirt was constructed of blocked fabric panes or possibly fringing in its original form. The flounced skirt is worn over an open front robe in dark ochre trimmed in blue. Cinched at the waist with cord, the garment is deliberately designed to accentuate the breasts. A blue trim ceremonial apron is also worn over the skirt. In each hand, she holds a snake, perhaps symbolic of fertility. to the 
the Mycenaean and Minoan trade with the Egyptians. Scarabs, beads, pendants and ivory all found their way into Minoan signs. Scenes on Egyptian friezes depict Minoan and Mycenaean travelers carrying textiles and elaborate metal goods. Aegean textile patterns also adorn the tombs of elite Egyptians and are believed to have been copied from coveted imported cloth. of cupbearer from Knossos Crete. From at least the Middle Bronze Age onwards, kilts were worn by Minoan males. Like the kilts worn by women, the garment was also shaped like a double apse when laid flat. Such kilts were often trimmed with wide bands, and in this case, also a tassel extending from the band. Although no patent textile has survived from Minoan Crete, it is theorized that the complex patterning of the kilt would have been achieved by a weaving technique whilst the textile was on the loom. The garment recreated here is taken from the fresco known as the procession from Knossos, in which kilted males bear pottery in procession and decorated one of the main entrances to the palace. In polychrome images such as wall paintings and faience figurines, males are represented with dark skin and females with light skin. This distinction is also characteristic of contemporary Egyptian art, which is probably the source of this Minoan convention. <laughs> is based on the fresco of basket carrying from the Agia Triada sarcophagus, Crete. This vibrant indigo robe derives from an image on a limestone sarcophagus discovered in Crete. The woman carrying baskets is part of a procession related to burial customs. The baskets she carries are believed to carry fruits of the earth, the connection with the natural world is a constant theme in the known art. The garment is a vivid indigo, a color produced as a result of murex dyeing. The murex shellfish was processed to produce colors such as purple and blue-violet to scarlet. It is apparent from archaeological evidence unearthed on Crete that the Minoans were proficient in murex dye and may have even pioneered the process of extracting the dye from the shellfish. The costume is made up of two parts. The robe has a horizontal neckline and bands down the sides. Dr. Jones has identified it as a hippon. Over the hiton is a bolero of the same indigo color, edged with red bands. This hiton style is different from the Minoan open front hianos and is the first to mark the presence of the Mycenaeans on Crete. The Aegean combinations of red, white, blue and black. Red dye was produced from the roots of the madder plant that grows abundantly in Greece, and yellow from weld or saffron. Saffron threads with their distinctive yellow are derived from the crocus flower's stick. Costume is based on a faience figurine.
from croissants. Dating to the late Bronze Age, this impressive costume is taken from a fragmentary faience figurine uncovered from the temple repositories at the Palace of Croissants and is among the most fascinating garments in antiquity. The skirt is cut and styled in an A-frame shape, a style often worn over vertically striped robes or hair needles. The fabric of the skirt is horizontally striped with a wide hemband in a lozenge chain design. A separate apron is worn over the skirt. The circular design in gold applique is inspired directly from the figurine. These ornate aprons most certainly had very special significance and possibly marked the office of the Minoan high priestess. The elaborate dress and the prominent representation of women in the known art, as well as their depiction as symbols of worship, indicate at least some of them held important positions in society, particularly in religious spheres. The representations of bare-breasted women in both fresco and statuary have been interpreted in many ways over the years. As is true for all material culture, dress does not have any inherent meaning. Rather, it is ascribed social meaning in a particular cultural context. This makes it difficult for historians to reconstruct the meanings surrounding certain images without reflecting their own social biases. by Minoans 
at palatial ceremonial occasions, and the use of sleeves is an obvious difference to the less fitted, draped garments of the classical period. The fresco inspiring this costume is of Mycenaean origin and depicts the head and torso of a female with long tresses and headband. She holds up a necklace in her right hand. Like many garments depicted in Minoan frescoes and statuary, it is designed to emphasize the breasts, but covers them. is based on the fresco of male banqueter from Knossos. The banqueter on the camp stool fresco from Knossos wears an elaborate mantle, blue with a wide white border, fringed at both edges. The mantle was wrapped under the left arm and tied to the top of the right shoulder with its blue and white fringed corners hanging. The unusually decorated mantle may have marked a certain class of society, perhaps that of a nobleman in the king's service. Translations of Linear B texts identify a group of nobles called followers who served as delegates of the king and who wore a distinctive form of dress with white tufts or fringes. The mantle is worn over a saffron-colored robe with black trim. <laughs> of a wounded lady from Thera. Discovered in Xesti III on the island of Thera, this element of a larger fresco depicts an image of a woman sitting in a rocky environment holding her wounded foot. She wears a two-part hyenos. The top is translucent and the skirt is opaque, presumably joined together below the waist. Edged in red bands across her arms and shoulders, and detailed with diagonal lines, the robe displays dotted diamond patterns. Tassels hang off either arm. She wears a blue headcloth trimmed in yellow and has ornaments in her hair. Her skirt is unusual. It consists of blue and white folds, or lappets, and red dotted diamond patterns and crosses. Rather than having the cord tied around her waist, it hangs down her hip, possibly indicating a state of duress. Shown next to her on the ground are stigmas of crocus blossoms. It is difficult to guess any specific significance of her attire. Her seated, distressed position has been interpreted as one of mourning by Dr. Jones. Her image is one of the more unique ones, as she's shown hand to her forehead, as self-involved and separate from her neighbors, the necklace swinger and the veiled girl. Dr. Jones has suggested that she is a prototype of Demeter and that the veiled girl is Persephone and the necklace swinger is Hecate and that the entire fresco program portrays the Homeric hymn of Demeter.